Why don't we just lift up our hearts tonight? Thank God for the word. Amen. Lord, we praise you and we thank you tonight for the precious word of God. It is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. We thank you tonight that the power of the Holy Spirit is here to make it alive on the inside of us, to reveal it to our, our spiritual eyes. Lord, I thank you there's an unction here tonight and there's an ability to see. We thank you that you desire for us to see and know you. So Lord, I thank you that by way of your spirit, the, 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 the veil is lifted off of our eyes and we clearly see we clearly know your word and we thank you father for added revelation we thank you that faith is added to us tonight it's just going to be a good night in the word hallelujah and we give you praise and we give you glory for it in jesus name and everybody said amen 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 praise the lord god is good hallelujah i said he's just good He's a good God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, go with me if you would. We'll go together to some places. Um, Isaiah 53. We were there last week. We'll go back. Romans 8. We're going to open together there. And then also in Hebrews chapter 7, we'll open together uh, there as well. But we are in um, a series that... We've, caught, we've titled it, Jesus, the Ultimate Servant. And I don't know if you've seen it yet, but Jesus loves to serve you. He lives to serve us. Amen. And it doesn't matter what the price, it doesn't matter what it costs Him. He's willing to go all the way for us. He's willing to do what it takes, hallelujah, for you to walk in God's blessing, God's covenant blessing, a new life, hallelujah, power, victory, healing, sound mind. Jesus serves us even today to help us to walk in those things and to live that way. Amen. And so it's just been an awesome time. I know there's so much that... Uh, that we're not really getting to cover. You only have so many uh, Wednesday nights that really um, you can pack this stuff in. But I pray that, that you're getting something. I pray that you're getting just more light and more insight into how wonderful our Jesus is. Amen. Uh, one of the verses that we looked at, Mark chapter 10 and verse 45 in the Amplified, he says, the Son of Man did not come to be served. But you know, he rightfully could have. He's God. I mean, he could have came down and demanded all kinds of things. But what did he say is that I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so God Almighty is saying this. He's saying, I'm not here to serve, to be served but I am here to serve you. I am a servant God. And it just goes to who He is. You know, you know, it's hard to separate yourself from who you are. It's hard to separate yourself from your nature. That's, that God's nature is to serve. I was, I was thinking about you know, a, a, a good example of this, and maybe you can relate. I know we have in our family big family events, you know, we have big get-togethers. Even as a church, we have, you know, large gatherings and, and different events that we have. And you always have those family members or you always have those church people that come. And they're not hosting it, but the minute they show up, they're helping you set up tables and, you know, and, and they're helping you get the food out and, and they're taking out the trash without you know, you even having to ask them, you know, and all throughout the night, you know, they're, they're helping. And then after everything's over, they're still there. And they're helping you put away the tables and they're help carrying stuff to people's cars and all that. It's, it's, it's the nature of that person to serve. It's just in them. That's Jesus. Yeah. 
That's Jesus in your life. He shows up to aid. He shows up to help you. He shows up to give you everything he's got. Amen. And to bless your life with his service. Amen. And so we've looked at a lot of things. We've looked at how um, Jesus modeled servanthood. We're going to look at, at that a little bit more next week. We've looked at how he served us even in his coming. What was involved in his um, coming to the earth, being made in the likeness of men, submitting himself to his own creation. Coming into this world the same way that you did. God did that. Why? To serve you. You were lost and without hope. And he paid that price because that's what was necessary for your redemption. Substitution was necessary for your redemption. And he was willing to go that far. It's just almost incredible to think about. We talked about how uh, the reasons why he serves us. It's because of his mercy. It's because of his compassion. That's what motivates God to serve. And then we looked last week at how he serves us through his ministry as our mediator. How when he came into the earth, he said, the, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. To get in the middle of people's messy stuff. Religion said, throw these sick people, these, these possessed people, just get them out of the city so we don't have to deal with them. And Jesus came with the anointing and he said, I'm here now with this anointing to intervene and to get in the middle of your messy situation and to bring help and deliverance to you. Amen. What a contrast between religion and the heart of God. Amen. So he was that intervener, and he's still intervening in our lives today by way of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit continues that, that, that mediatorial ministry where, where Jesus said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving, but I'm sending you another helper, exact duplicate, another aid, what I did for you, He'll do for you. He's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And He sent Him on the day of Pentecost. And I don't know how much closer the Holy Ghost can get to us. He's on the inside of us. Amen. To comfort, help, be an advocate, to be an intercessor. I mean, all those things. To help. And you see the heart of God. He still wants to serve you. He even sends angelic help. I guess if you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, maybe you'll believe in angels. I don't know. I don't. He just, help is all around us. Him serving us is all around us. Hallelujah. And then we looked at how he served us in, as mediator in his work of redemption, how he got as an intervener, he got in the middle between us and the sin, and he took the punishment, he took the penalty, hallelujah, for our sin. Isaiah said this, he was marked as a transgressor. Yes. Yet he had never transgressed. That he was there serving us as our substitute, as our mediator, and with his blood he purchased a new way and a new life a new covenant that is sealed in His blood. And now we can boldly approach the Father through Him, our mediator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then His blood is always speaking for us. His blood is always speaking grace and mercy on our behalf. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's look at some other things that Jesus is still doing today. I'm going to tell you something. He has done so much. Don't you dare come up to me and say you can't make it. Come on. Come on. 
Why did he do all of this? So you can make it. Hallelujah. And the work is done. The work is finished. Now it's just there for you to believe it and walk in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And reap the benefits of it and have a victorious life here on this earth. Yes. Amen. Amen. He went the distance for us and we can make it. Yes. Say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Make Hallelujah. It. Glory to God. Are you over in Isaiah? Isaiah 53, and let's start here in verse 12. We, we looked at this a little bit last week, but I want to I look at something else that's in this passage. Isaiah 53 and verse 12 says, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. We mentioned this last week. The great that he's talking about there is you. When you get born again, when you receive God's Son, God calls you the great. I should get a better amen than that. Because people go around talking differently about themselves than what the Bible says. Well, you know, I'm just an old sinner. I'm pitiful. No, that's not what God said. He says you're the great. Then he goes on to say this, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Look at what else he calls us. He calls us the great, and he calls us the strong. Well, y'all just got so many weaknesses. No, the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. You got a new identity in Christ. Amen. We ought to say exactly what God says about us. He calls us the great, and He calls us the strong. Say, why do you have to talk about this? Because religion, religion, we're trying to get it out of you. Trying to get it out of our thinking. It stinks. It violates faith. But praise God for the Word. It's so rich. It just says it like it is. He says, He shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many, look at this, and made intercession for the transgressors. So this passage here is prophesying about the Messiah. It's prophesying about Jesus. And it says this about him, that he would, number one, bear the sin of the transgressors. And the second thing it says right here, it says that he would make intercession for the transgressors. So think about this. Jesus not only... Uh, poured out his life, shed his blood, took stripes on his back, um, sword was thrust in his side, crown of thorns on his head. He did all of that, but he also did this. He interceded for the lost. He made intercession for the whole world that they would be reconciled to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That word there, intercession, we're going to talk tonight about the intercessory ministry of Jesus. And through that intercessory ministry, He continues to serve us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, it says there, it says that He made intercession for the transgressors. And that, I think, is just a very simple um, uh, definition of intercession is prayer. We're going to look at some, some definitions of intercession um, and, and just look at some different scriptures about that. But the first thing we see is prayer. Prayer. Jesus was that go-between between God and man at redemption as he poured out his blood, amen, 
as he uh, did all that he did, everything that we talked about last week, but he was also the go-between in prayer as he prayed for the lost, for the transgressors, all of them to be saved. You want to know the cool thing about that? You are fruit from that prayer. Isn't that amazing? He prayed for the whole world to be reconciled back to God. And when you and I got born again, you know, we talk about prayer fruit. You know, we, you know how wonderful it is when, when, you know, when we pray and that we're supposed to bear we're supposed to bear fruit in our prayer life. Jesus bore fruit in His prayer life when you came to God. And I think that's one of the reasons why heaven gets so excited. Don't you just get excited too when people get saved? I can't contain it. I'm sitting there wiggling in my seat. I'm sitting there, you know, like I just can't hardly contain it. It's so awesome. And you think about heaven and how heaven rejoices. But I think even Jesus looks at it a little differently. Like that's my prayer fruit. I prayed for them Amen. to be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. So go with me over to um, uh, Romans chapter 8. Let's get into some really good things. Glory to God. So the definition of intercession, let me just give you a little bit and then we'll go into some things. Um, it means prayer. It means to entreat. It means to meet with in order to converse. And it means to petition. <clears throat> Jesus spent a lot of time praying. And I was going to go through all of the different accounts, and I just do not have time. But you can do it on your own. You can research it on your own. There is account after account after account where Jesus prayed. He prayed for the... We see that in Isaiah 53. He prayed for the transgressors. He prayed for us in John uh, 17. Have you ever read that prayer? It's beautiful. He prayed for those who would receive Him. Amen. And then He prayed even over His mission. Um, I love this one. We'll, we'll just give, I'll give you one. How's that? Luke 6, 12. It said, And it came to pass in those days that He went out into a mountain to pray, and he continued all night in prayer to God. And so, I mean, he, here's Jesus. This was, this was a huge part of his earthly ministry. His disciples saw him pray a lot. And in this account, he went up into the mountains and he prayed all night to God. What was he praying about? Well, he could have been praying for you. He could have been praying for his disciples. We see, I mean, you look through the scriptures and, and who he prayed for, and I just think that's so beautiful there in Isaiah 53 that we see that he prayed for the transgressors for them to be saved. But you see this all throughout his life. So what do we think, maybe, 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 that Jesus is doing now? <laughs> Ooh -wee. What do you think that Jesus is still doing right now? He prayed for you before redemption. He prayed for you at redemption. And he is still praying for you after redemption. Yeah. Romans 8, are you over there? Hallelujah. You got your shouting shoes on? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got a couple of verses here that I really like. Romans 8, and let's start in verse 34. I, I just like this question right here. Who is he that condemneth? Who's always trying to condemn us? All the time. The accuser of the brethren. I like what it says here. Who is that he that condemneth? It is Christ 
that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Do you know that that was done for you? We talked about that already. Let me go on a little rabbit trail just a little bit. If Jesus did that for you and you believe that, don't you live a condemned life not one more day ever. Amen. Amen. He did that for me. I believe on him. I've received that. And the devil ain't going to sit on my head and condemn me not ever again. I'm not living a condemned life. Amen. Amen. He said, It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive today. Hallelujah. He ever liveth. He lives forever. And he is seated at the right hand of God and he is making intercession for you. Jesus is praying for you. Jesus, God of heaven and earth, is involved in praying for you right now. Get a hold of that. He loves you so much that he is focused on you. He is focused on you. Well, I know he loves the world. Well, you can get lost in the world. You know what I mean? For God so loved the world, yes, the whole group of us. We're just, we're, it's a group thing. No, it's not just a group thing. It's an individual thing. If you were the only person that needed salvation, the only one that needed redemption, he would have sent Jesus just for you. He is God. He can focus on each and every one of us. And I'm telling you, he is focused on you. Hallelujah. And not just at the cross either. I'm talking about right now. Right now he is alive. Right now he is thinking about you. Right now he is praying over you. Glory to God. I don't know if that's exciting to anybody. That does something to my faith. That does something to my faith. Hallelujah. I make it personal. He's interceding for me. Glory to God. I'm on his mind. We used to sing that song, When he was on the cross. Remember that one? <laughs> I was on his mind. Well, that's great. And I believe that. Brother Copeland sings it. It's a great song. But he didn't forget about me when he got off the cross. Oh. Hallelujah. I was on his mind at the death, burial, resurrection, and when he ascended on high to sit at the seat right next to his father in that seat of authority, he's thinking about me. He's thinking about me. Woo! That's good. Glory to God. Go over to, um, go to Hebrews chapter 7. Keep your place there in, um, in Romans 8 because we're going to come back there. But let's see this again. Hallelujah. He prayed for us before redemption. He prayed for us after redemption or at redemption. And he prays for us after redemption. Isn't that amazing? He made intercession for us before, during, and after. And he's still making intercession for us today. Amen. Woo! Yes. He's a too much God. He's a too much God. He didn't stop at the cross. He didn't stop at the tomb. He didn't stop when he ascended. He is still serving us today. Hebrews 7. Oh, verse 25. I, I danced around a little on this one. I love this. Wherefore he is able. I just like saying that. 
God is able. God is able. God is able. You may not be able. Your finances may not be able. Your job might not be able. Man not, may not be able. But God is able. God is able. Look at your stuff and say, God is able. Look at the mountain and say, get out of my way. God is able. Hallelujah. God is able. He is able also to save. That word save is not just... Um, uh, what we think in terms of being delivered out of hell it's all inclusive of being saved, delivered, healed restored soundness provision prosperity he is also able to save them and we're going to look at the them in a minute to the uttermost, I like that to the uttermost that means it doesn't doesn't matter how, how, how bad it is. It doesn't matter how low it's gone. High it's gone. Amen. He's able by his power to save. He is able to save them to the uttermost who they that come unto God by him. Remember we talked about that last week. You can't come or approach him by Buddha, by Muhammad, by some Middle Eastern religion, nature. Oh, I just, just connect with God, with the trees. Well, sorry. You can't save people trying to come to him through trees. You got to come one way. Through the mediator, the one mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. He's able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him. Look at this. Seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever lives. He ever lives to make intercession for them me. You need to personalize it. You need to personal. You need to say, Jesus, just say it. Say, Jesus, Jesus is interceding Jesus. for me. He makes intercession for me. Hallelujah. I mean, th this is just amazing. His ministry did not end at the cross. Come on. He's active. He is active. And he ever lives to watch over your life and to pray. This is what he's praying. He wants everything that he purchased for you at redemption to be fulfilled and to be a reality in your life. That's what he wants. <laughs> he didn't purchase it for you for nothing. Come on. He purchased it for you so that you would walk in the fullness of it. Hallelujah. So he watches over you. He watches over your life. He, I mean, he knows you by name. He knows your situation. And he takes it upon himself to intercede from that place of authority, the highest seed of authority that there is. And God himself is making intercession on your behalf. That does something to my faith. Woo! Jesus himself is praying for me. Jesus himself is talking to the Father about me. He ever lives to do this. I love this, um, this one Greek scholar. He said this about Hebrews chapter 7. He says, being always alive, Jesus is always alive for the purpose He's not just alive, like just eat cookies and milk or whatever. Watch the cute little angels or whatever. He has a purpose. His purpose is you. His purpose is you fulfilling God's plan. His purpose is you walking in what uh, redemption provides. 
being always alive for the purpose, I like this, continually making intercession for them. He does this continually. He does this every day. If you were to call Jesus up right now, I call my mom up sometimes, what are you doing? You know, she'll give me the rent. She went to Walmart. She went and she did this, you know, all these things. If you call Jesus right now, say, Jesus, what are you doing right now? I'm making intercession for you. I'm interceding for you. I do this continually. I live to do this. I do this all the time, always making intercession for you. Man. I don't think I'm going to make it. You need a revelation. You need a revelation that what Jesus did and what he continues to do is so that you win. I'm going to win. I'm not a loser. I'm not defeated. I'm not going to be conquered. Hallelujah. I'm going to live victorious. He is just more than enough. He's too much. I mean, you look at redemption. He spoiled principalities. He, he, he dealt with the sin problem. He destroyed the works of darkness. You would think that's enough. <laughs> but he's just extravagant and too much in his love for us. Too much in his serving towards us. Hallelujah. Go back to Romans chapter 8. You getting anything out of this? I love this. Oh, I've been thinking about this for a long time. How wonderful this is. How wonderful to know. Hallelujah that Jesus is praying for us. Interceding on our behalf. Look at this in uh, Romans. We're going to go back to uh, chapter 8. There's something here I want you to see because we quote this a lot, but a lot of times we don't connect it to this verse. Romans 8, 34, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. He died. He's risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us. He's saying since Jesus died, he rose again. He's making intercession for us. Look at this next part. Then who? Really? Who? Who's going to separate us from the love of Christ? He died for us. He rose again for us. He's praying for us. Who's going to separate us from the love of Christ? You think his resurrection, you think his redemptive work, you think him praying for us might have something to do with the fact that nothing can separate us from his love? Woo! Man, he deserves all the praise. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? It's a question. Tribulation going to be, is it greater than the greater one who prays for me? What about distress? You going through anything distressing right now? Jesus died for you, rose for you, prays for you. <laughs> is it big enough? Is it great enough to separate you from the love of God? Woo! Persecution, famine nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter but nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us died for us rose for us prays for us hallelujah all these things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us, for I am persuaded. See, this does something to your persuasion. I don't know, when you think about Jesus, that he ever lives to intercede for me. <clears throat> I'm persuaded to not quit. 
I'm persuaded that I'm going to win. Come on. <clears throat> I'm persuaded that I'm more than a conqueror. I'm persuaded that everything the Bible says about me is true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. He said, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why? Because He redeemed me. He reconciled me. He died and rose again for me. And He ever liveth to make intercession for me. I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. I'm going to make it. I'm going to finish my course. I've got victory in my life, and I'm not losing it. Hallelujah. I walk in health. I walk in God's best. I walk in provision. I walk in more than enough. My dreams come to pass. I walk in success. Hallelujah. I have soundness in my family. As for me and my house, they shall be saved. Jesus is, I'm sure, praying about that. Praying for my kids praying for my in-laws, praying for my parents, praying for my husband. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. Now, go over, go over to um, John chapter 16. Let, let me just read to you while you're going over there a prayer. And, and this prayer has always stood out to me that he prayed for Peter. You remember the prayer that Jesus prayed for Peter? It's found in Luke 22. But it always has just kind of stood out to me that maybe Jesus might be praying along these lines for us too. <laughs> he says in Luke 22 in verse 31, he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. That'd scare a lot of people to hear the devil's intentions for them. But I love what Jesus said. He goes, but I have prayed for thee. <laughs> Woo, what comfort. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. That thy faith fail not. This is the prayer that he prayed for Peter. He said, you know, the devil's going to attack you, but my prayer for you, I'm praying for you that your faith will not fail. Hallelujah. I believe Jesus is praying that for us. That our faith would not fail. In the midst of trying times or whatever, Jesus is praying for us that our faith would not fail. And you know what? Jesus had confidence in his prayers. What he prays for you, he believes he receives it. What about you? What about you? When you pray, do you have that same confidence? Do you have that same confidence that you believe what you receive? Well, I don't know. I think sometimes God says yes and sometimes God says no. That's religious jargon. That's religious jargon, not Bible. Well, there's that song, sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. <laughs> Well, Jesus didn't have any unanswered prayers. And you don't have to have any unanswered prayers either because, now here's another facet of intercession. He is making intercession for you. Let me give you another definition. You go over here to John chapter 16. This is another definition of intercession. It means to come before a king to ask for favor. It means to come before a king and ask for favor. How many of you believe that Jesus has favor with the Father? 
Now, we know that we have favor, but it's through Him. We have favor with God through Jesus Christ. But when you understand that as an intercessor, Jesus goes to the Father requesting favor for who? Not for Himself, but for us. Now look at this verse. John 16, and look at verse 28. It says, and in that day, Jesus here is talking to his disciples. Let me just kind of give you the setup of this. He's talking to his disciples there about the new life that's coming. There's a new life. There's a new covenant life coming that with my blood I am purchasing for you. And this is what it's going to be like. He talked to him about the Holy Spirit. And he talked to him about prayer. He said, in that day, that's the day that we're in today, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. What are we doing? We're approaching the Father through Jesus, our mediator. Verily, verily, whatever, uh, or I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Now picture this. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. We come to God <laughs> through him, through his name through His blood, and we make petitions, and we make requests of the Father. And Jesus is there as our intercessor to ask for favor. And He looks at the Father and He goes, they're here because they've come through me. They're here because they've chosen me as their mediator. They're coming here in my name. Give it to them. Give it to them. Do it for them. Hallelujah. Yes, it's like the stamp of approval right there. Hallelujah. He's there interceding for us. Hallelujah. That's the only way we can even come. It's through Him, but He's there on our side. And the, God the Father is not against us, but see, God has to do things legally. We have to have a legal right to be there. He has to have a legal right to do it for us. And through Jesus, He does. Hallelujah. So you really think Jesus is your intercessor? is going to say, sometimes I say no. <laughs> when you come to Him, based on the blood, based on His name, based on the Word of God, you're coming, hallelujah, based on the promises of God to make requests of Him, you think Jesus could even legally say no to you. It's awfully quiet. Good. He's your intercessor. He makes intercession for you. Think about what's on our side. I mean, I understand we access the promises of God by faith. Amen. But Jesus is there to back us up as our intercessor. I don't know if that does anything for you. Amen. Yes. But that does a lot for me. Over here, Hebrews 2. Let me look at something else. You getting anything out of this? Yes. Hebrews 2, 17. You can go there if you want. I've got to hurry. Hebrews 2, 17. Um, back to this definition of intercession. It means to entreat, to meet with, in order to converse, to petition. It means to come before a king to ask for favor. It means to intervene, or it's the action of intervening. It means to plead with a person either for 
or against another. And so Jesus is actively doing this. He is always before God speaking on your behalf. His blood. <laughs> His blood is present speaking on your behalf. Remember we talked about that. His blood speaks for you grace and mercy. <sighs> Hebrews 2.17, this is talking about Jesus. I'm going to try to wrap this up. It says, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. We, we talked about this, how he became like us to identify with our weakness, to identify with our sin, with humanity. He wanted to do that, and here's why. So that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. See, as our high priest, he stands before the Father on our behalf all of the time. He goes on to say, in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, for in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them, or to aid them, or to help them that are tempted. So he is our intercessor, and he is able to come to our aid in making intercession for us. Hallelujah. When we are tempted, when we're tempted to give up, when we're tempted to fear, no matter what it is, hallelujah, our Jesus, the one who is, 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 is living to serve us, sees us in that situation, and he makes intercession for you and I to help us in that time of need. He's merciful. He understands what we're going through, and he immediately goes to intercede on our behalf. Let me give you another one, Hebrews 4, 14, and I'll quit with this one because we're out of time. Oh, I wish I could have gotten into more. Did you get some help tonight, though? Look at Hebrews 4, 14. I, I love this. <clears throat> it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. I'm telling you, hold fast your profession. Hold fast to what the Word of God says about you, what it says about your situation. Hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly, not with shame, not with any reservations at all. Amen. At all. No reservations. Come to him. Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain, look at this, mercy. That's the attitude you get when you come to God. Mercy. That's his heart. You don't get punishment, beat you down. That's religion. You come to God, you get mercy. He said, come boldly to the throne room of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace. Now, I'm going to say this. Grace is more than an attitude. Grace is the manifestation of God's power in your life. When you come, you don't just get, you know, embraced with mercy and love. You get empowered by that grace. Uh, Hallelujah. The power of God begins to be infused into your situation. That we may find, find grace to help in our time of need. Jesus is always ready. To work in your life. Jesus is always ready to pray for you, intercede for you, empower you, whatever it is that you need. He's always there to ask for favor for you. 
I'm telling you, we just got to believe in this more. Come on. You know, I was thinking, of, I was thinking about that. I'm like, Lord, help me, help me come with something here to explain this. And this is what, this is what he gave me. He said, he said, he said, my people need to come to me like a little child. When my children, I have three children, when they were little, they came to me for everything. Everything. The toy wouldn't work. Here they come. If their socks fell off, and they wanted them to put back on, they'd come to me. If their shoes were untied and they wanted somebody to tie them, they came to me. And my life was centered. Any mamas remember this these days? Your life is centered on helping them. And listen, I understand authority. We have to walk in our authority. I understand it's our responsibility, amen, to understand the principles of faith, understand how the kingdom works, speak our faith, speak to the mountain. I understand that. I get it. I think some of us think we outgrow coming to Him and we don't. You never outgrow coming to Jesus. You never outgrow that. That's not an immature way of thinking that I'm telling you folks, I've been there when you just, I mean, you've done, you've done all you know to do and you're standing and you just, you come to God like a little child and you're like, God, I just need some help here. And I know you are ready to help me. You are ready to help me. You always want to work in my life. You live for this. You live to help me out. You live to see me walk in your best. You live to see me fulfill the things that, that uh, or to see fulfilled in my life the things that you accomplished at the cross. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I mean, we grow, yes, and we learn, and we learn the, the things of the kingdom, yes. But there's something about our heart. There's something about our heart that sees us coming to our Father, coming to our Jesus, coming to the one who loves us so much, who just wants to help. God wants to help you. Is there anything that you might need a little bit of help with? He lives for it. His ministry goes on today, and it's you. His ministry continues today, and His ministry is to serve you through interceding for you each and every moment. Hallelujah. Isn't it awesome? Jesus is interceding for me. Jesus is interceding for you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he'll go to prayer for you. He'll go to prayer for you. He'll go to the Father on your behalf for you. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. Amen. Well, I pray you got something out of that. I could go on and on and on, but oh, I, don't, I just love the heart of Jesus for us. He loves us so very much and cares about our life so very much that He wants us to live victoriously. Amen. 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 And everything He did and everything He still does for us is motivated by His love for you. Amen. Let's just lift our heart and let's thank Him. Jesus, we praise you tonight. We thank you. Thank you for interceding on our behalf. Hallelujah. You live, you ever live to make intercession for us. We thank you for your ministry of intercession. We thank you, Lord, that you never give up on any of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are the God who is able to save to the uttermost. And you pray for us and you intercede for us. Hallelujah. We thank you. 
We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Sobre te yarabakayim. 